Getting Unstuck continues with Session 2, The Habit of Distraction, with Pema Chodron. It's a kind of ordinary situation that sentient beings have almost in the DNA this habituation to moving away from the present moment. Probably the most basic level is we think about things all the time and it takes us away. And Trump Rinpoche used to talk about the difference between fantasy and reality, meaning being present was some kind of contact with the immediacy of our experience. And he called that reality. And then fantasy, which is we're just lost in thought a great deal of the time. A great deal of the time. All those people driving on the freeways at 85 miles an hour, (laughs) most of them are distracted. It's a little scary to think about it. There's some kind of automatic pilot that keeps you on the road and everything. But the norm is to be habituated in this pattern of leaving, not being fully present, not contacting the immediacy of our experience. And then the Buddhist teachings talk about many lifetimes and karma. They say, you know, it's like that because for lifetime after lifetime, you've been strengthening that habit of distraction. Well, if you don't buy multiple lifetimes, just this lifetime is enough to know we all strengthen that habit. So we get to whatever age we are, and our habituation has been to strengthen the habit of leaving, always distracted. And actually, unfortunately, we get a lot of comfort from leaving. Lost in thought, fantasies, plans, it gives us a lot of security and ground. So we're very habituated to it, Pretty much we like it, and it gets stronger. So the definition of habituation, which is a very down-home way of really talking about karma, the definition of habituation is that whatever you do, you're strengthening that habit. That if you say a mean word, you're strengthening the habit of meanness. Suppose you're angry, and the instruction with meditation would be that you would stay with the underlying feeling, but you wouldn't feed it with your discursive mind about how wrong somebody was or how wrong you were. But generally speaking, we're often running with our thoughts, usually then with our speech and our actions. We keep habituating ourselves and making the pattern stronger. So the definition of habituation is getting better at it. We kind of get to choose what we want to get better at, and mindlessly we get better at things that we don't like about ourselves, interestingly enough, like our out-of-control anger or our low self-esteem or our self-pity or our fearfulness. And then the more we strengthen it, the more we do it. So it's circular and it just keeps going and going. The urge arises, we do it, then it makes it stronger, then we do it more, so we keep strengthening the habituation of patterns which cause us a lot of suffering. And they tend to fall into those three types of scratching I was talking about. We habituate ourselves in numbing out, or we habituate ourselves in uh, getting even and revenge and angry thoughts, aggression, or we habituate ourselves to make patterns of craving and wanting and needing and grasping onto things. In Buddhism, those are taught as the main ones that cause us suffering. So this habit to be elsewhere is addressed by learning to stay, and meditation has to do with that. But very key to this is that the average person, when we see and that we are so distracted, and when we begin to see what we do, that's more ammunition for low self-esteem or self-denigration or self-hatred even. Instead of it being of benefit to us, we twist it against ourselves, like uh, pointing the finger at ourselves or giving the finger to ourselves, whatever you want. And, uh, (laughs) And the sense of 
being fundamentally defective in some way gets stronger. And in fact, the whole point is to notice what's happening with kindness, sense of humor, gentle touch, but also be almost ruthlessly honest, moving toward the place of no self-deception or nothing to hide from yourself. So if you can combine that moving in the direction of nothing to hide from yourself with humor and loving kindness, then the whole thing begins to transform your being. I'm going to introduce you to a Tibetan word And if you went and looked for teachings on this, you wouldn't find any unless you have listened to the teachings of Zigar Kanchal Rinpoche, who I'm studying with. I give full, complete credit to Zigar Kanchal because he's the one who has given lots of teachings on this, continues to do so, and it's had a very strong influence on my life and on my teachings. So this is a teaching on a Tibetan word, Shenpa, S-H-E-N, as in nut, (laughs) nut case. (laughs) S-H-E-N-P-A, Shenpa. And actually it's taught about a lot in Buddhism, but not quite in the style that Sigurd Kuntral has been presenting it. The usual translation of the word shenpa is attachment. If you were to look it up in a Tibetan dictionary, you would find that the definition was attachment. But the word attachment absolutely doesn't get at what it is. And so Zir Kuntral said, let's just not use that translation because it's incomplete and it doesn't touch the magnitude of shenpa and the effect that it has on us. So, if I were translating Shenpa, it'd be very hard to find a word, but I'm gonna give you a few. One word might be hooked. How we get hooked. We get hooked and then we get stuck. So everyone likes to hear teachings on getting stuck and how to get unstuck because it's so common to feel stuck. Guess what? You can meditate for a long, long time and you still get stuck. In terms of having the scabies and that itch that goes along with that and scratching it, Shenpa is the itch. And it's the urge to scratch. So urge is another word. The urge to smoke that cigarette, the urge to overeat, have one more drink, or where your addiction is. And it gets uh, into everyday experience. Somebody says a mean word to you. And then something in you tightens. That's the shenpa. And then it starts to spiral into low self-esteem or blaming them or anger at them, denigrating yourself, then words and actions and maybe if you have strong addictions you just go right for your addiction to cover over that bad feeling that arose when someone said this mean word to you. This is a mean word that gets you, hooks you. You know, another might not affect you, but we're talking about when it touches that sore place. That's a shenpa. The fundamental root shenpa is what in Buddhism is called ego, ego clinging. And we experience it as this tightening and a self-absorption gets very strong at that point. So the fundamental root shenpa is what in Buddhism is called ego clinging or self-absorption or cocoon. And then the branch shenpas are all the different styles of scratching and so forth like that. So someone... um, criticizes you. They criticize your work. They criticize your appearance. They criticize your child. And Shenpa, almost co-arising. As soon as those words have registered, boom, it's there. And it's like a tightening. 
Shenpa is not the thoughts. Zigar Kantra made a big thing of, he said, it's closer to an emotion. It's uh, pre-verbal. Then it breeds thoughts really quickly. But Shenpa is not the thoughts. He said it's more like an emotion, but I think it's even pre-emotion in a way, it just kind of like is that. <clears throat> so that you can feel it happening, which often people just starting with this can. You feel it happening sometimes. Say like.